Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. It is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 424. Welcome to our channel. If you are not currently a subscriber, we encourage you to do so. There's a little heart right over here with an SMS. All you have to do is move your mouse right over the top of it and click that subscribe button. Now, what do we have for you today? Oh, we have something something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. I've got an older technique for you that's going to be updated just a little bit. So something old, something new, something borrowed. Well, I've got inspiration from my SMS girls from the samples that they have made. And then something blue, wait till you see some of these samples. There's a blue sample there that is like, <gasps> well, actually there's a few of them that are like, <gasps> so, this is a technique based class that is completely commercial free and starts at the very beginning. So very simple. And we get progressively more and more into the technique until the very end when it's like, holy smokes, artichokes. So if you're a new crafter, please stay with us. I promise there'll be something here that you will learn. There's a tip or a trick or something you haven't seen before that you can take with you. And if you're the most experienced crafter, well, you just never know, do ya? <laughs> now we are so close to Thanksgiving. So close to Thanksgiving. In fact, our next YouTube will not be on Saturday. It will be on Black Friday and 8 a.m. sunny California time, 11 a.m. in New York, and 4 p.m. in the United Kingdom, but on Friday. Will we be having a Black Friday sale? Yes, yes, we will. It's a smaller sale, by all means. It's it, it's a definitely a smaller sale, but we will have one for you, and the deals that I have been able to, to negotiate are, oh, they really are, but products also very, very limited. Now, we do not launch our Black Friday sale until Black Friday. We are not like everybody else, and I am okay with that. I have such beautiful memories of my mom taking me shopping the day after Thanksgiving, and the stores years ago would not decorate until the day after Thanksgiving. It wasn't Christmas until Thanksgiving was over. Thanksgiving was a real holiday back then, and you could be in the store on Monday and it just looked like a normal store, but then you'd go Friday after Thanksgiving, and it was like a wonderland had happened. And in fact, we don't decorate SMS until that time as well just the way we are. So if you are looking for some wonderful Black Friday deals, you won't see them until 8 a.m. sunny California time on Friday. <laughs> Not this Friday. Well, yes, you're. I'm taping this on Thursday. So by the time you see this, it will be the week of Thanksgiving. Now, I know Thanksgiving can be a bit dicey sometimes. I know it's a hard, a hard holiday for me. I had a boyfriend at 17 take his life on Thanksgiving. And so it's never quite been the same. It just, it can't ever be the same. And it is, I, I told the story of it a long time ago in a YouTube. I actually waited till the YouTube was completely done. The class was over. And then, cause I used to get so many questions about the kaleidoscopes that are above and there's all, and, and why I named my, my dies. In fact, the release, we have simply defined a kaleidoscope release today. So I know that I know that Thanksgiving and holidays can be a bit dicey and hard sometimes, but we are here together and we are going to have an amazing time. We have SMS girl Claire coming to our house for Thanksgiving. We keep it very, very, very small and we are cooking. Now, Claire is an exceptional cook. <laughs> She's not, I'm making the, I'm making the stuffing in the turkey. We'll have to see what happens. I do not cook at all. We'll, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Claire is responsible for the cranberry sauce. Now, she's not buying the cranberry sauce in a jar or in a can. In fact, the one my dad used to get, he used to slice it with a knife. <laughs> no, Claire is making the cranberry sauce from scratch. Of course she is. So at the very least, we all know the cranberry sauce is going to be delicious. 
<laughs> the turkey and the stuffing? Well, that's me. <laughs> we'll see. I'll let you know. <laughs> and for those of you, for those of you who, who, the holidays can be tough, just know we're here for you. We're all in this together. And gosh, just watch a, just watch an SMS video. It will definitely distract you. <laughs> that's for sure. And, and hopefully, hopefully my banter will just put a smile on your face. I know having all of you out there definitely puts a smile on my face, especially when things get tough. So today, today I have got, I've got Simply Defined Kaleidoscope dies, I've got Stampendous, I've got Couture Creations, I've got Sizzix, I've got Simply Botanical, a little bit of everything. But before we get there, we have to do winner, winner, chicken dinner, and I have two winners for you. Both of these girls, congratulations. You've just won $25 to spend on anything that makes your heart happy. It might not even be for you. You may choose to use this and buy somebody else something special that they've always wanted. Who knows? You have the opportunity to spend it any way you want. Let's see. I, look, I think I, and I can, I can say both of these names. Now these girls didn't all they did was post a comment on on last week's YouTube that was kind and we were able to approve it and now now they've got $25. You don't have to do anything to claim your prizes. You just have to log onto your account and there it is. Have fun. <laughs> okay, our first winner winner chicken dinner is Marcella. Hello Marcella Chavez. How are you? There you go. You're our first winner, winner, chicken dinner for the week. Congratulations, my dear. Are you jumping up and down? Because you should be jumping up and down. <laughs> our second winner is Luella. Luella Stevens. Hello, Luella. How are you doing? Congratulations to you. You also have won $25 to spend on anything that makes your heart happy. Now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to take you guys longer to figure out what you want to buy because you've got it. There's so much on our online store, you know, decisions to be made. I bet it takes you longer to figure out what you're going to buy with that $25 than it did for us to download all the comments, have our software select them, and then Elena make me the cheat sheets. <laughs> but have fun. <laughs> so we have to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner for both of these lovely ladies. Are you ready? Okay. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo. Could you for you. Congratulations to both of you. I am so happy for you and enjoy whatever it is that you buy from us to you. Wahoo. Could you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tilt down. We're going to get started for today. And again, I know I banter a lot and I talk and it is what it is and I am who I am and I just appreciate all of you for letting me be me. <laughs> I want to sing, I've got to be me, but I will get in trouble for copyright infringement, so we will not do that. Are you ready? We're going to tilt on down. I'm going to start with Simply Botanical for November and then show you samples of what we're going to be working on and then we're going to get into class. Get ready. It's really going to be fun. <laughs> okay, down I go. Bye everybody. Bye. Okay, zoom on in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Let's see. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Be down a little bit more. Am I right? Am I good? I can't tell sometimes. See, we're so low tech. <laughs> All right. So, Simply Botanical for November is here. What is Simply Botanical? It is a die and stamp set that is a, it's one set once a month. That's all it is. And it is co-branded with a different manufacturer every year. This year we have worked with Spellbinders on this item. So you will see Simply Botanical in the corner and you will see Spellbinders over here. That means they manufactured this die for us, this set for us, and it is value priced at $14.39. Let me show you some samples. 
So it is limited when they are sold out, they are sold out and they're just darling. Look at how cute are these. And yes, even the words come with it. Just a simple hello. So you get the stamps, you get the dies. Everything comes in one package. It's once a month. It's a co-branded item, which means that we've paid Spellbinders to manufacture this for us. And gosh, I just really love them. And I love um, just a simple hello. I love how big the letters are. I'm so glad we got it in there. And then the actual stamp and die set. So if it's something you love, 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 or even like, 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 <laughs> you can find it in both the YouTube Yummies category for this week and the exclusive Simply Define, Simply Refine category under Simply Botanical. And then you can see all the rest of them as well. Okay, so that's that. Now, let me show you some samples for this week. And this is part of the Simply Defined Kaleidoscope die set. I have three kaleidoscope sets for you. And this is one of the samples. Yes, it really is beautiful without question. So and then here we have so the hello is the Aussie Andrew words, and the background is a simply defined kaleidoscope die. How pretty is that? And then last but not least, ooh, I'm gonna try and zoom this in so you can see the detail. SMS Girl Belinda did this one. Can you see all the layering dies? Now, Simply Defined is my brand and they are value priced. All the dies are a full A2 size and then you open it and she's got love. They're an A2 size. So I'm gonna show you the dies first and then we are going to get into technique. So this is how they come packaged. You know what, I'm gonna zoom back a little bit. So this is how they come packaged. There are four dies in every set. Each die is an A2 size die. And where I could, I filled in the space with extras. These are layering dies, which means that you can layer one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other to make a complete finished look. Or you can use them individually and you get all of the extra elements and all of the words as dies. Because again, I pay, I pay for this much space. <laughs> I have to buy this much metal. I'm going to fill that metal with as much as I possibly can. Honestly, I have done that ever from the very beginning. I have always made sure to add in as much as I can get because I want to get the biggest value for our money. And with these being value priced, you may be saying, well, what does value priced mean? Well, I know that there are manufacturers who will sell an A2 die, one die from anywhere from $15.99 all the way up to $26.99 for one. We do the entire set for you for $29.99. You get all of it for $29.99. Absolutely, and that is value priced. So there's my my peacock feathers, and oh, they, they did such a beautiful job with them. Here is a background set where you can use one, two, three, four, how, uh, you can layer, it's amazing. And there is the design. And I think this is the one I'm gonna start with. And then my last one, I just love the foliage and how it wraps around and four dies and the added bonus die is actually a floral die that we're going to work with but wait till you see what we're going to make with these and again $29.99 for all three so the I want it all 
is $89. Again, I know some companies that will have layering dies where if you buy the three, you're looking at $60, $70, sometimes $80. Here you're getting all four for $29.99. They do sell out quickly at times. They really do. So if there's something that you like, I suggest you grab it because when they are gone, we do not bring them back. Now, I think I'm going to start with this set and this is the background set. I'm gonna pull the four dies off and I'm gonna tell you, I have already pre-die cut some of it because I wanna get onto the techniques that I have to show you. But I don't wanna assume that everybody knows die cutting and what it is, look at, I've cut into these. <laughs> I've used these to make my samples. Not everybody knows what die cutting does or how it works. So I have to start with that, I have to show them how we start. These are called chemically etched dies and there's no blade to them and it's hard to imagine but this actually will cut paper into these pretty little designs. And the way a layering die works is that you start with your first layer and then you move to your layer two on top of it and then you move to your layer three on top of it and then you move to your layer four that gives you one complete look. But you can also just use layer three and four, or you can just use layer one and two, or you can just use layer one and four. The idea is that you're able to mix and match any way you want. So I have already die cut some of these, and I have them, I have them here. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So I have them already die cut, but I'm gonna die cut another one just so you can see how die cutting works. So I'm gonna do the background. I'm gonna do the one that has the least amount of detail. And you will see on the dies, where there's a ridge, that's a cut. This die could be run through like an almost like an embossing folder and you could emboss all of this beautiful detail work. But this is your base die because it has the fewest amount of cuts. Then our secondary die, it's got a little bit more detail. Then our third die, it's got even more detail. And then our fourth finishing. So I'm gonna cut this one just so you can see how it is done. All right, so I've got myself a piece of cardstock. This happens to be 80 pound cardstock. I'm gonna cut off a piece. And bring my machine on over. So I am using a Sizzix Big Shot machine. This is a manual machine. Let me scroll on back just a little bit more. It's a manual machine. There's a there's a handle right here that's going to roll through my plates so that the wheel underneath hits the die and cuts the paper. You will need a precision base plate with my dies. There's just no two ways about it. You need a precision base plate. My dies are very, very intricate. If you have a Sizzix Big Shot machine, a Big Kick machine, a Sizzix Fabi machine, a Vintage machine, a uh, vagabond machine you you really do need a precision base plate and and we do sell them this is the chrome version if you already have version one or version two that have more of a black top they work fine too the chrome is just new it's nicer and it doesn't really cut in the other ones the dies will cut in and leave marks that's fine it doesn't hurt it it's just that they made the chrome so that that doesn't happen people seem to like that better but if you have an older version it's absolutely fine the big shot machine comes with a uh, standard platform and now a solo shim and you will need that solo shim to cut a wafer style die you'll need to put your precision base plate right on top your die face up so the ridges are facing you and see I can't cut myself there's no blade and yet it is going to cut the paper due to the pressure from the roller and you need a cut plate so when you get your machine you're going to get two clear plates 
honest. They start out as clear, but as you use them more and more, the dye cuts into it, and that's what it's supposed to do. Eventually, these will crack and you won't be able to use them. You'll have to replace them, and I wanna say you get two for about $10.99. You wanna use the oldest plate you have when using a precision base plate because it puts such pressure on that it will also leave a little bit of an indent, and you don't wanna use a do not cut plate for that. So I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit so that it's not the it's not a straight on perpendicular, no, parallel angle to my roller. Put my paper on and then my cut plate and I'm gonna send it on through. With more intricate dies, you definitely will need a You'll need to go back and forth. You'll need to do a rotate. Oh, this one's not so intricate. So it should cut out on the first go. And it did. See, all my little bits and pieces have fallen out. And that's what we love. We love the fallouts to do just that. Those little, those little bits and pieces that have fallen out, that's what they're called, fallouts. <laughs> Big technical name there, but <laughs> But that's what you love to see, all of this little, all these little pieces. So now I have cut one of the four dies. This one fits. Did I have it right the first time? Oh, backwards. There. This one fits this die right here. And this is what it makes. Meh, right? I agree, meh. But then if we take the second die, which is here, and we've cut it there. We've cut it there. Here's the design. You put that on top of this one and look at what you've got. But then we have the third die, which is here. And that third die fits here. I put the third die on top Now look at what I've got. But we still have one more die. I don't know what, uh, I've got it in black. Let's go ahead and do it in black. So here's my last die. Fits right there. And now I've got a completed image. But, and then I could put, let's just grab a piece of white behind it. So now I've got a completed image. But I'm not, I'm not limited to this. I could take my very first die and my very last die and make an image. I could take my very first die and my second die to make my image. I could take my second die and my third die to make my image. I could take my second die, my third die, and my fourth die to make my image. It all is up to you. How do you want to layer it? You have options. It's all about you and how you want to put it together, which is why 
it makes them such an amazing value. I could just, I could just do that die. I could just do that die. I could just do that die. What is it you want? When you have four dies that can work independently of each other or together in multiple combinations, you have magic because you are not limited. If I change the background, let's change that green. If I change the background to gray, Now I've got a whole nother look. I just swapped the background out. Now I've got an entirely different look pending on the color that I use. Gray. So a gray background. Or a green background. You decide. Top piece on, top piece not on. You decide. They're very, very versatile dies. But I want to show you one more thing with them because here we're using we're using colors to play with. What if you just wanted to do a monochromatic look? That's where Sizzix Opulent Paper comes in, and it's pretty amazing. I'm going to play with the charcoal paper today, and there's a reason I'm playing with the charcoal, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but this is, this is Sizzix Opulent Paper. They have five different finishes. You get ten sheets each of five different specialty finishes. You've got a glitter which doesn't move, you've got like a matte satin, you've got a metal finish, you've got a pearl finish, and you've got a mirror finish. And they all, they all coordinate together beautifully. I'm going to take, I've got some right here, I'm going to take and cut. I'm going to hold on to these so they don't go too far away. I'm going to take and cut all four dies out of this paper. So we're going to roll them through super fast and I'm going to I'm going to try to use I've cut them before. I've got another set down there. I'm going to try to use different dies for different layers so that when I pull the the cuts I've already done, we can mix and match and you'll be able to see all the different combinations. So I'm going to do the very background in that mirror type finish. I'm just going to trim it on down. I've got my precision base plate, my die, kind of put it at a little angle so you don't get a thump. If it hits the roller and it's parallel, you can get a thump. It doesn't hurt the die. Let me see if I can do it. It doesn't hurt the die and it doesn't hurt the machine, it hurts your heart a little bit because you think, oh my gosh. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so that wasn't so bad. You heard that big creak and crack, not the end, but let's get to the end. Okay, if you heard that, you might think something's wrong. No, to avoid that, all you have to do is just rotate your die a little bit so that your angle going in, feeding in, isn't at a parallel with the roller. So let's send it on back. Although this one is a not so intricate, so it probably doesn't need it, but we'll do it anyway. Creaks and cracks are okay. So here's die number one. All the little bits and pieces fall out. Now they're not going to fall out as easily as they do out of cardstock. Why is that? Well, because this is a specialty paper. It's a coated paper, which means it starts as white paper, but then they come back and they layer and glue 
the film onto it to give you the mirror look or the glitter look. Absolutely. If you have a, a specialty paper that is white on the back, that means that if you tear it, it's going to tear to white. Oh, see, so you can even see there's the film. Can you see the film that's been layered on? So this paper started as white and there's a layer of film. That makes it a little bit more, I mean, it, the pieces come out pretty easy, but they don't necessarily fall out like if I was using just a piece of cardstock. All right, I think I'm good. So there's one. And let's take the next die and let's take the next piece of paper and let's do this one maybe out of this sheet. So cut it down. That one's done. So all I'm using is paper that came out of the opulent pack. And it's kind of a wash, rinse, and repeat method. You're going to die cut all of them exactly the same. A little bit of a twist. Now this is a little bit more intricate, so I may rotate it when it gets to the other side. So send it on through. And then when I get to the other side, oh, it looks like it cut pretty good. I may end up just doing a quick rotate, which means my die went through that way. I'm going to turn it this way. And that way it hits the roller in a new way. If you're using a die and you're going back and forth and back and forth and it's not cutting, you need to move it somehow rotate it because that wheel is going to add pressure in a different way when the die goes through vertically versus horizontally. It's all about the linear planes on a die and where the cuts are and how many, how many linear lines there are on the die. It's this whole big thing. But if you're having trouble cutting, first make sure you're on a precision base plate and then rotate your die. See, this is more like typical cardstock. It's got a coating over the top of it, but it's not like that mirror where it was definitely a little more harder to get those pieces out. They fell out, but not as easy as just basic cardstock. Okay, so there's cut number two. Oh, Mr. SMSs. I'm trying, Doris, I'm trying to get it into the trash, but it's, it's not going well. <laughs> So I've got Look at how beautiful that is. That's just two cuts. Let's do the third cut. So this one is now done. Third cut is a little more intricate. Let's do it out of, let's do it out of like the pearly. Little more intricate. My die on an angle, send it on through. Close enough, oh yeah, close enough. Roll it on through. Go ahead, I can take that little, that back piece off. I don't need it anymore. Oh, it looks, gosh, that looks like it cut pretty well, but I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. Now mine still has a little bit of the sticky from the packaging, so it's sticking to my, my clear plates or my cut plates. You can get your little packaging off. It won't stick as much. But let's do a little rotate and send it on back. Oh, am I off center? No. Okay, there we go. So these are almost going to fall just right on out. You can already see they're falling out. Okay, did you see that? Did you see them? 
how easy that is those fill out I mean it's like that's because this is cardstock this paper doesn't have a white backing it's the same color all the way through just like any other cardstock see how easy that is it's not a coated paper gosh and I know I should go through and poke all these guys out I do get rather intricate with my dies but I love the detail it's all in the detail there are fabulous die manufacturers out there that just keep it simple I am not one of them <laughs> I push the envelope I push it every time because you just don't know what you can do until you know you can't do it right oh look at that okay so now I have got I've got one two and three look at how elegant is that and then the last one I'm going to do is out of the glitter and that is again a very detailed die and this is a coated paper so those little fallouts aren't going to fall out as easy as they did from that last die that's just cardstock but let's give it a whirl shall we This is a coated paper, which means that glitter is a laid on top of a white sheet of paper. So you're asking the dye to go through glitter, adhesive, and a base paper. And the dye doesn't have any blades. Okay, there we go. Will these dyes go through other machines? Sure they will. Look at that cut really good. Sure they will. Um, it'll go through a Platinum 6, a Platinum 8. It will go through a Gemini. It'll go through a, or, uh, yeah, it's a Gemini, right? It'll go through a Gemini. There's, if, if it's a six inch wide, these will actually go through a cuddle bug too because of the, they're, they're four inch, four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can get these through a cuddle bug too. Will they go through a sidekick? No, they are too wide. Okay, so I've cut all four dies using paper from Sizzix Opulent Charcoal. So pretty. Now, Opulent comes in rose gold. It comes in charcoal. It comes in gold. It comes in silver. It comes in mystical. And it comes in ivory. Ivory is really more white than ivory. Don't know that I agree with the ivory name, but it's not my product, so they get to name it anything they want. I just don't know that it's actually ivory paper. Oh, see, yeah, see, they're gonna come out just fine, but because it is coated paper, they're not just gonna fall out. I'm gonna have to pull all of my little, all of my little petals so that I have my openings. If this was just cardstock, they would all fall out but my gosh if you wanted to leave them in I guess you could use a coated paper and then all of them will stay right where they're at <laughs> and I still have the centers that need to come out all the little centers need to come out too all right well I'm not going to do that let's get some of this background out and Let's see what we have. Okay, so base die, secondary die, die number three, and then die number four. Add that final element of detail. 
But remember, I said that I cut them earlier, so I have them over here too in totally different cuts. Totally different. I mixed up the paper. Here I used I used my glitter as my base and I used the light as my next and then I used the mirror for the next one. Look at how beautiful is that? Or I could change it and I could put this one on top for my next. Look at how beautiful is that. I could take my top one and add that in and finish that out. I've got my top one in my glitter. I could take that one and finish it out. The whole thing is you have options. Oodles and oodles of options. <laughs> Let's see that one. I guess I cut the same one twice. I thought I was doing them different. That one, that one, that one. Look at how beautiful that is. And then I had from earlier, remember I did this one in just plain black cardstock. Right over it's all how you want to put them together you can mix and match any way you want but that tone on tone on tone is a beautiful sophisticated look okay moving on let's see moving on I think the next one I'm going to use is, I think I'm going to use the peacock feathers. Man, that took me a moment. <laughs> okay, this die is different than the one I just showed you. It still has four dies, but it has a front and a back and a front and a back. What? I don't understand. Okay. Let's grab, let's grab the peacock. So the peacock has a die and a shadow to go with it. And then it has a die and it has a shadow to go with it. So you can use this independently of this. But then you can also layer all four of them together to get that. And then there's detail dies in here. So here, this is the die that does a background, but this, this is a totally separate die that you can cut out. And this die will layer right on top of this one. So you could have three layers if you just wanted to use this die you've got an additional layer. We've got additional layers here and added little elements for you. But I wanna take this die and I wanna do something else with it. You see it in paper, it's beautiful in paper. I could just put that one on top of this one and back it in a colored paper and do that. Not use the background dies at all. It's really up to you. 
how you want to layer and how you want to use them. I could take those two and put it here and then grab this one and layer it there. Totally up to you. I could just put this one straight on there, not use the backing at all, use it with the backing and then the extra detail die. Options aplenty, but I'm going to take it and do something a little different with it. And this is where having double sided adhesive tape comes in and becomes kind of important. Let's see, um, I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to take the big one. I'm going to use this one. Let's see if I can get some of that sticky off so it doesn't stick. And this one goes back there. And maybe I'll hold this one to the side too. This is the background for it. Let's see. So with my classes, if you're still with me, you will know that there's zero editing. What you see is what you get, and when I make a mistake, it's on camera and you see it, and when something's fabulous, it's on camera and you see it, and I never exactly know how things are gonna come out until they come out. The only thing that I do, and usually I don't even do that, is pre-cut, like I never pre-cut paper, I mean, but I wanted to, I needed to show you all the different things, so it's very rare for me to pre-cut anything. We usually just do it together. Now, I'm gonna take this one, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use this as opulent paper again. I'm going to grab, hmm. ooh, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this sheet. And I'm going to cut my big, pretty peacock feather right out of this sheet. And remember, this is cardstock. It's the same color on both sides, so it's going to cut pretty darn simple. Bring over my machine. Paper down. Doesn't matter which side because it's the same on both sides die and then just a little bit of a rotate just so it feeds into my machine on a little bit of an angle minimizing the creaks and the cracks and the kathumps ah, I always get my clear plate slightly askew makes it a little harder for me are we good yes okay yay all right so then I'm gonna take it and I can take off that back piece right here. Come on. Don't need that piece at all. And I'm going to rotate my die. And then I'm going to send it back. And because I've rotated, any place that it didn't cut the first time, it will cut this time. Send it on through. See, look at how nice that is when my, my clear plates aren't slightly tweaked. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think that looks good. So I'm, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the back to see if I can see all the cuts. If for some reason I didn't see a cut, I can just rotate it and send it back through. Every machine is a little different. Everybody's machine. You may have a Sizzix Big Shot machine, and I have a Sizzix Big Shot machine. You use yours once a month. I use mine once every day, and our machines are going to behave differently depending on the usage. So the more you use your machine, the looser it becomes, and you may even have to add a shim every now and then to get something to cut. Every machine is going to be a little different. Oh, but isn't that happiness when it all just kind of comes right on out? I think that's just a little bit of happiness. Because it's cardstock and because we used that precision base plate, everything just falls out. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside 
and clean up my mess, kind of, sort of. <laughs> and I'm going to pull out my Stacy tape. Now, I have a 5-inch roll and a 6-inch roll. And we sell Stacy tape in rolls as thin as an eighth of an inch. Do I have a thin roll somewhere around here? So I think this is a quarter inch. So we sell Stacy tape all the way from an eighth of an inch all the way up to a six inch roll and just about everything in between. This is a double sided tape. It is heat resistant, which means you can emboss right on top of it. You can throw your embossing powder down and emboss. Today though, today we're going to use it with glitter and we're going to use it two different ways. So because my dies are four and a quarter by five and a half, if you buy the five inch tape, you'll need to have, you'll need to roll out enough for the die to go on this way. If you have a six inch roll, you can put your die this way. Just depends upon which way you prefer and how much you want to spend. We tried to make my Stacy tape as strong as possible, as long in length as possible, and as affordable as possible. So my tape is a little bit longer and a little bit stronger than than almost anybody's tape out there, but if you happen to have Suk Wang tape, which is score pal tape, it has Suk Wang, Suk Wang, Suk Wang all across the, that's going to work beautifully. If you have Elizabeth Crafts tape, that's going to work beautifully. Mine's just going to be a little bit longer and a little bit stronger. And hopefully, I think I'm, I think I'm the same, if not less in for, for the, for the tape. So, I'm going to go ahead. Now, the minute I take this off, as long as it's like this, I can handle this no problem. But the minute I peel it off and tear it, I have to do something with it. So I'm going to grab a piece of white paper and I'm going to tear a piece. Yeah, you don't have to use scissors. You absolutely can tear it. It's wonderful tape, but it's terrible, <laughs> meaning you can tear it. I'm going to put it down on my paper. And I peeled off a little bit more than I need, so I'm just going to trim off my sides just so it doesn't stick to everything. Now, you can pre-make sheets like this. You can pre-make things like this and just have them sitting there. Or if you're going to a crafting class or you're teaching a crafting class or a crop, you can just have a bunch of these ready to go because until you pull the liner off, it's perfect. There's nothing that can harm it. There's, the sticky is not exposed. Once you expose the sticky underneath, though, once you pull that back, this is sticky right there. You have to do something with it. If you put the liner back on, you're good again. No problem. You take the liner off, you've got to do something with it. And that is where this piece comes in. I'm going to peel my liner off and I'm going to put my die cut down directly to my sticky. You're like, why would you do that? Well, for those of you who already know, shh. <laughs> and for those of you who don't, wait. And for those of you who have forgotten, welcome back. <laughs> You're having a, oh yeah, moment. <laughs> so I'm going to pull my liner off. I am not going to throw this away. Years ago, I used to teach in my store, uh, be a die cut diva class, be a glitter goddess class. And these were all day classes with me. I took about 20 students and they'd come in at 9 a.m. in the morning and we would do technique after technique after technique. They would leave at five o'clock in the afternoon having sample after sample after sample after sample. Now, once you lay that die cut down, you may be able to pull it up if you have to move it, but mm, Stacy tape is pretty darn strong. So I wanna lay it down and then I need to take 
this liner. So everybody who was in my Glitter Goddess class, they would go home because they had made sample after sample. So they had they had this liner again and again. And I would tell them, you're not allowed to throw it away. You have to take it home because we're going to do something with it. The liner is the only thing that doesn't stick to the sticky. I need to push that die cut down into the adhesive. All I need to do is put that liner right back on top of it and then give a good push, making really good contact, kind of like we do when we're stamping on a gush mat. We want good contact between that stamp and that piece of paper. Well, I want that die cut to be all the way down on my sticky. And since the liner is the one thing that doesn't stick to the sticky, it becomes a very, very valuable tool. You also want to leave yourself handholds. You don't want to cut it so close that you have nothing to hold on to. Now I've got sticky showing. I got to do something with it. What am I going to do? This is where a micro fine glitter comes in. And actually my glitter is more than micro fine. What's the difference between glitters? Well, there's a lot. There's microfine glitter, which is almost like a powder. Really, it's almost it's it's almost like dust. It's finer than grains of sand. That is microfine, and I only carry two colors. I carry white and diamond. White is a glitter without glitter. It has absolutely no iridescence to it at all. And diamond, which we have been waiting for for almost a year to get here. I know that's a long time, but it's what it is. Diamond has a multicolored iridescence to it. So this is micro fine versus an ultra fine glitter. Ultra fine glitter is still fine, but it's not as fine. The granules are a little bit bigger and then you have fine glitter, which is even bigger than this. And then, I mean, you have chunky glitter, which you find in schools. It is all the same product, just ground to different, different consistencies. I could have red ultra fine glitter. I just have to grind it finer than an ultra fine. I could have the micro fine, I'm sorry, red micro fine glitter. I could have any color, any color glitter can be done all the way into a micro fine. What makes the difference is that the finer you grind it, the more it takes to fill the jar, <laughs> which is why micro fine glitter can be expensive. It can. We sell ours for $3.99 a bottle, and I only do the two colors. I don't think you'll find an a micro fine glitter anywhere on the market for anywhere near that price. I only do the two colors, that's it. And then everything else we sell from Stampendous or a manufacturer. I do these two because I couldn't get them anywhere else. So I had to go out and manufacture them. Now I'm going to take my micro fine, is this my diamond? Yeah, my diamond. And I'm going to put it right over the top of my die cut that's on my sticky sheet. And I'm just going to put it, pour a little bit right over the top, right over the top. And then I'm going to let the glitter kind of do its own thing. I'm going to let it walk on down my die cut. And anywhere that there is exposed sticky from the tape, my glitter is going to hold to. I need to move a little over here, I move a little over here. Anywhere there's exposed sticky, that glitter is going to adhere. And then I can take an inexpensive makeup brush and I can brush it off. It is so fine that you are going to put back in almost as much as you took out. And now there's no stick, but I have all of this glitter. So I'm just gonna put it right back into my tub. And there we go. This is glitter without making a mess. 
Now because it is micro fine glitter, we have to do something called making the glitter get happy. And how do we do that? With your finger. It is the most valuable tool in crafting that you have, your hands. How do you do this? You take your finger and you burnish it. Now I'm not gonna like burnish it and I'm not gonna like, oh, gently. I'm just gonna give it a nice little rub and not too hard, not too soft. And what happens is the glitter brightens up and it sets into the adhesive tape. So what have we done so far? We die cut out, easy peasy. We put a piece of big tape on a piece of paper, easy peasy. We put our die down, made sure that it was stuck really well, and then threw some glitter down on top of it. And why do we want to do all of that? We're making a canvas to paint on. To paint on, yes, we're making a canvas to paint on. So now that I have come this far, now I can choose markers. Ozzy Andrews markers, Copic markers. What, what, what markers do you have? Like a Bic and Sharpie permanent markers. I can take markers now and start to color. Because if I were to color directly onto my paper, it's fine. But that's what I get. Now that I have put a, a barrier of glitter down, now, let's stick you on the side, now I can go in and color and give a stained glass look effect. Why did I put my die cut down on the sticky sheet, on my sticky tape, before I put my glitter on? Well, Markers are filled with ink. Ink is liquid. If I were to do my sticky tape and then my glitter and then put my die cut on, glue my die cut down, even though these are very, very fine grains of glitter, I mean very, very, very fine grains of glitter, they're still grains and they're still highs and lows and peaks and valleys. And this is liquid. Liquid is going to do anything it can to escape out. It's going to find the path of least resistance. Any one of us who have had a leak in our bathroom or our kitchen knows water and liquid finds a path of least resistance and it will bleed out. But if you put your paper down first on your sticky and then put your glitter, that paper acts as a barrier. It's going, uh, it can't go through because it's all the way onto the sticky. There's no glitter underneath the paper for highs and lows and for that, that liquid to seep out. There's a reason to do it in this order and that is key. If you put your glitter down and then you stick your die cut on top of it and you go in to do the technique I'm going to do, it is likely that you will eventually have some of the color from the ink bleed out and we're trying to avoid that. So, super easy. Now all I have to do is go in and color. Let's see. Let's do blue, 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 blue. Blue, blue, blue. Now why did I choose the opulent paper? Well, I chose the opulent paper. I could use black paper, absolutely. Because of course the color no matter what color you use, is going to absorb into the black. You're never going to see color on black because the color is always lighter than black, so it's going to absorb in. That black is going to just absorb it. But if I were to use a white paper and I wanted to put white on top of this and then go in and color, well, white is going to show every mark on it. Sizzix paper, the opulent paper, it's all specialty paper. So it all has an, uh, a, a finish to it that kind of withstands the ink going in it. And it doesn't uh, change the color of the paper. It allows you 
to go in and color without worrying that you're going to change this gray to blue because it resists the blue. It doesn't, it doesn't absorb in like it would on black. I could certainly do this on black and the color would absorb in and you'd never see it. The opulent paper resists the color. So I've got some blue going on there and then let's use some green. And I'm going to take that green right into that blue. And then maybe some, maybe some more green. And then maybe some yellow. And I am dabbing. I'm not coloring. I'm dabbing my ink. I'm dotting it in. I'm going to take that yellow into the green so that it creates its own blend. Take that yellow into the green so that it creates its own blend. And I can take my blue And my blue into the green and just kind of make some blends. I can also take my colorless blender. Mm. Now I've got a dark blue there. Dot 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 dot. I can also take my colorless blender which really isn't a blender at all. It's a color lifter. And I can go in there. This isn't, if I were to have these three colors here and I use this blender, which is that what they're called? They called it, right? Uh, yes, colorless blender. Okay, folks, it does not blend anything. Do you see that? It doesn't blend anything. It's actually a misnomer. This is a color lifter and it will lift color up. So I can go in and if I want to make a little bit more of a blend, I can just lightly touch between the two colors. And blend them in. You can see that I, I lightly touched because I have color on my marker. Now, once my marker goes clean, I'm free to go back in and do whatever I want. But look at how pretty that is. Let's go in and let's just do a bunch of them super fast. So, blue, 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 blue. I can do all my blue at one time. I can go in and do all my green at one time. And I'm taking it into the blue and then up. Just dabbing it. Just a dab. I'm dotting. That's all I'm doing is dotting. I'm not coloring. I'm dot, 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 dot. And add some green in. And now I can come back with my yellow. And yellow on top of the green. just to make some very, very pretty blends. And I've started. And it is fast and simple and effective. And you get the, you get the glistening of the glitter coming through it.
it's coming through the color. The color is translucent. It's actually transparent. So when you lay the color on top of the glitter, you're not going to mask the glitter, but it's not going to be glitter. It's going to be, hey, I'm kind of sparkly under here. Look at me. I've got a little bit of a wink, but not so much that it's like, wow, that's a lot of glitter. And remember, the blender tool is your friend. The blender tool allows you to go in and lift color up. What if I what if I did what if I did this one in yellow? I did the whole thing in yellow, but I wanted to add some highlight to it. All I have to do is take my color lifter and pull that color up. Look at that. Now I've got a shadow, a mid-tone, and a highlight all in yellow. So I could come through here every now and then and do a solid color Do a solid color. Oh. And I'm dabbing. Dabbing my color in. So I've got solid color green and solid color blue. And I could come in and pull some of that color up. To give a highlight and a mid-tone, I could make that at the top almost white by continuing to pull the color up and really have gradation. Look at how beautiful is that. Now, this one you do have to work it. You can't just dab it. So, the colorless blender is the one color you need more than anything else. The good thing is Ozzy Andrew sells them for a buck 99. The Copic version is on sale almost $6. And you can start adding highlight and shadow with just one color. Do you want to blend? Do you want single colors? How much gradation do you want? You can choose. You have options. Isn't that amazing? And it's just with a marker. So I can go in add my color. Let's add some here and let's add some blue. I'm not even going to add green. I'm just going to take my yellow, woo, my yellow, wrong side, my yellow right into my blue. The minute, now if you've got blue on your marker on your yellow, that's okay. You just run it until that blue comes off. Once the color is back to being yellow, you're good to go. So I can lift my color. Do I have blue on there? I can lift some of that yellow and lighten it. For that matter, I can almost make it white. And really make a highlight and a low light and a mid-tone. You can do this. You absolutely can do this. 
All right, let's move on. We're going to do it again with a different die. Not right this minute, but we're going to do it again. All right, so this is one technique. What if we took, remember this piece? We laid it down, we pressed into it. What if we took and we die cut this out of the exact same die? Exact same die. I've got some gray in there, but that's okay. It should cut. This is just the liner. This is the piece that we peeled off. Get in that beautiful. Now I'm going to die cut this piece with the same exact die. Bring my machine over. This is super thin. Front and back is easy peasy. You don't have to rotate. You don't even have to go backwards if you don't want to. How about I straighten out? Creaks and cracks are fine. And then back just for the fun of it. Okay. And then literally, it's all going to fall out because I'm working with a liner sheet. I'm working with something so thin, but it's the one thing that doesn't stick to the sticky. <laughs> I sure do miss teaching my die cut diva classes. I did die cut diva, stamping superstar, and be a glitter goddess. I miss teaching those classes. You made nothing in those classes. You didn't go home with a finished project, but oh my gosh, we start, we did technique after technique after technique. And when you left, you left with this, this bag that you've written what you did and how you did. You went home with so many techniques to then go and expand on in your own craft room. I loved those classes, but they were all day. We'd start at nine and we'd finish at five and we broke, we'd take a break for lunch. And I would always ask, I would always ask, um, I'd always ask the, 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 the class. I would always say, okay, you guys, it's first off before they knew it, it would be like one o'clock in the afternoon or 1230. I mean, we would start at nine and in that much time, they would a blink of an eye, three hours would have gone by. And I said, okay, it's time for lunch. And they're like, what? I said, okay, do you want to take an hour for lunch or do you want to take a half hour for lunch? Doesn't matter to me, an hour for lunch or a half hour for lunch. Every time. We only want a half hour, Stacy. Half hour is good for us. They would go, they'd grab Taco Bell or whatever, they'd come back because there was more to learn. And that was so exciting. Maybe one day I'll be able to teach my classes again. I sure hope so. I miss them. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've done an in-store make and take. And let me tell you, our in-store make and takes take about an hour. So they're a mini class. I mean, some classes are an hour long and we don't charge a dime for them. You just come and you sit and you have fun and you play. And isn't it better to play with something before you buy it to find out that you don't like it? <laughs> okay, so I've cut this out of my liner. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna kinda do the same thing. I'm gonna grab a piece of my Stacy tape and let's get some white paper out. I'm gonna take a piece of my Stacy tape Tear it to the size I, close to the size that I need. Put it right down on my paper. Will sticky dots do this? No, <laughs> they won't. <laughs> Can you take two thinner sizes of tape and butt them together? Yeah, you might be able to get away with that because the die is going on top. So chances are you're not going to see a seam. Absolutely. So. Now I have got my cardstock, and this is just 80 pounds, simply to find cardstock. I've got my tape, and you know what? I'm going to trim this down because this is big. I'll save this for something later. I can make a sticker out of that. A sticker out of it? How would you make a sticker out of it? Um, 
die cut anything on this side and then peel off the sticky and it's a sticker. <laughs> it's the nice thing about Stacy Dave. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make sure all my little do all my little fallouts are out. They look pretty good. And I'm going to expose my sticky. And I'm going to put This is not a die cut. It's I mean it is. It's not paper though. I'm going to put this right down on top of my sticky. And the nice thing about this is if you position it improperly, let's say it's not exactly where you want it to be, it doesn't stick to your sticky. I could put it all the way down. Let's see, do I have it? I could press it down because you need to press it down. I could press it all the way down so I make really, oh, look at I got a piece of green. Go away, green. Easier said than done. Now I've just made a mess. Okay, so I need to stick this all the way down. I need to make sure that it is all the way down, that it's got good, it's adhered well to the tape. But if I look at it and I say, oh my gosh, I've got it in the wrong place, whatever. Okay, all I have to do is peel it back up because what's the one thing that doesn't stick to the tape? The liner. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to use my other glitter. So I'm not going to throw this away because this is, this is valuable. It's a commodity. The only way you get the liner is when you peel it off to use it for something. You don't throw it away. Get yourself a little bag and keep putting it in the bag. You never know when you're going to want to make a mask with it. How many die cuts do you own? Hello. So. Did I press it down really good? Did you see me do that? So I'm keeping my fingers off the sticky. I've got my little hand holds. That's important. I'm going to use my other glitter, which is a white glitter. So it is a glitter without glitter. There's absolutely zero iridescence in this glitter. And if I had, oh, there it is. You could use any color glitter you wanted actually for this. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from the top, put a little bit of line of glitter across it, and then I'm going to kind of let the glitter walk its way down and anywhere there's sticky, the glitter is going to adhere. So I'm running it back up the sides because there's extra tape on the sides. Now I've got all of this left. I'm just going to put it right back in. And put my lid on. So now I have to do the same thing. Even though this is a white glitter and you can see there's no iridescence to it at all, I still need to burnish it to make sure that it sits in there really well. To make sure that my I've adhered my mask really well, that I set my glitter. It's going to brighten up, but it's not going to brighten up with iridescence. It's just going to become a little whiter. And when I was teaching, I would teach and I would be, this is how I would do my, I would be talking to the students and setting my glitter just by doing this. I think when we reopen, that's the first thing I might do. I might do three classes. I might do that. I haven't done them in years and I miss it. And there's so much to be taught. There's so many techniques. I can't do it in a, a YouTube class. Even though they're two and a half hours long, two hours long, I still can't get everything in. So, gosh, and we would set up hundreds of jars of glitter. Literally, hundreds. I mean, you had, you, you, ugh, it was so much fun. Anybody who, who took the class, if you remember, say, yay, we had a blast. 
Who knew you could learn so much about glitter? People are like, it's glitter, what's there to learn? Oh, do I have, <laughs> boy, do I have techniques. <laughs> okay, so I've set my glitter, my glitter without glitter, my glitter that has non-glitter, no iridescence. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull that mask up. Now, you can choose to save this mask. You can use it again and again and again and again. Eventually it might tear or rip. I mean, it is just liner, but you don't have to throw it away after the first use. Oh no, you can use it again and again and again. And if I can get an angle on it, you can see where my peacock feather is and you can see the sticky. So I have to do something with this right now because it's sticky right now. And this is where, this is where the Stampendous glitter comes in. They sell it for a very fair price. You get a ton of glitter in here. We've got, I think, 16 or 17 colors of it. A lot of you already have glitter. You have so much glitter, you don't know what to do with all of your glitter. You've had it for years. Um, hello. Meet, oh, too much fun. Hello. So I'm going to take and I'm going to lightly drizzle, lightly drizzle You can get little spoons. I in my class I have I have tons of little spoons. A customer got me a, like a thousand little spoons for a Christmas present years ago, and I still have them and I still use them. I'm just gonna lightly drizzle. Okay, there's some blue. Then I'm going to lightly drizzle. Now I'm using more than one color glitter. So I am acknowledging that I'm not gonna be able, if there's any glitter left after I'm done blending it all together, if there's any glitter left, I'm not gonna be able to put it back into a jar that isn't anything but a mishmash jar. I can't take all of this and put it back in my purple. It will contaminate my purple. So you get yourself a little Tupperware and you have a mishmash pot. And sometimes your mishmash glitter is the most beautiful of colors. Sometimes you need it for fireworks and things like that and you've got the perfect color because it's a mishmash. So a little bit. So I'm going as light as I can with my color. And you're like, yeah, but why? Well, because you can always add more but you can never put it back in. Once I put this green, if I dump a ton of green on here, I can never put the green back in because it's gonna get blended. So less is more. You can always add. Remember, you can, it's, you can always add garlic. It's really hard to take garlic out of something. You can always add salt, but once it gets too salty, it can be a challenge to get the salt out. So you want to just use a little bit, which is why this glitter goes so far. Now, could have I have done it one color at a time? Yes, but where is the fun in that? I want it to blend. And I might not have enough. I might have to add more, but I would rather add more than spill too much. And then you're going to take your finger and anywhere there's tape that's exposed, my glitter is going to cling to it. Anywhere I have tape. I pulled that liner off, right? So wherever the tape was exposed, I now have to add something to it so it's not, see, it's sticky right there. So now I'm gonna grab my little makeup brush 
And I'm going to kind of gather all that glitter that hasn't been used. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. There's my mishmash. I'm going to kind of go over the whole thing just so that any place that is missing glitter that still has exposed sticky, now I can get rid of it. Now I can cover it up, up way up here. And by the time I'm done with that, I have such little glitter left for my mishmash pot. Okay. So you've got you've got the white backdrop that has no glitter, so it almost looks like it's on paper. But then you've got this bright, vibrant, beautiful glitter coming out of it. What do you think? You have options. You can do it one way, you can do it another way. You choose what works best for the project, for the look that you're trying to create. Maybe you're all about the stained glass effect, which is beautiful. Maybe you're all about the glitter effect, which is beautiful. You don't have to choose, you can do both. Maybe, maybe you just want paper. Maybe you don't want to do this at all. Maybe you just want it to be on paper. That's okay too. Point is you get to make the decision. You're not limited. $29.99. That can be a lot for a die. It can, I get that. But when you're getting four dies that allow you to do so much more, you got to put your money where it's going to be best for you. So I try to give you as much as I can to make beautiful things in so many different ways. Could I have, I could have, I could have put tape on top of this and die cut out so that all I had was the frame and expose the sticky and then put my mask down on it so that it would be all open. There's, you have, there's just, I, like I said, there's just not enough time. So what have we done? Oh my gosh, well we started with just, just the dyes, just the pretty dyes. And how you can use them to make beautiful, beautiful things all about how you layer it. It's all in the layering. All in the layering. Monochromatic, whether you like this, the, the tone on tone or you wanna, you wanna incorporate some super fun colors to get a totally different look. All about what you want to do. Then we took and we played with the with the pretty peacock leaves. Here we took a die cut and stuck it right down on top of Stacy tape, added our glitter, and then came back in with markers. The key marker is your blender. It's the one you're going to use the most. Here your dabbing color 
with these markers, but here you're pulling and you're lifting color. And for $1.99, it's better to get a few than to be in the middle of a project and run out of a blender pen. You're not gonna find a better blender pen for the price, you just won't. And then we made a mask. We took the liner piece off the top of our tape and we made a mask that allowed us, and the, the cool thing is you feel nothing. It's flat and no mess, mom. Right? And it's completely flat. This one's completely flat. You can't feel the difference between the paper and the glitter because it's filled up that space. So we're going to move on. This time, let's pull, let's pull the last die. Ah, come on. All right, so the last set are two intertwining leaves and they are two different dies. If you notice, this die up here has this leaf, whereas down here it does not. So they will intertwine to make the pattern. Or you can just use one leaf. And for your additional, your fourth die, I did a floral die. So let me pull them out. Let's see, I've got them right, are they right here? So I have got Yes. Yes. One, two. So if I put these together, they're going to make an intertwined leaf pattern for a beautiful background. But I could just use one. Could just use one leaf to do something. Then we have the background. So if you put the background down and this one lays on top and then this one lays on top. Now you've got the multicolor so you've got the shadow you've got the background behind it as opposed to it being open and it's beautiful but then there's the fourth die and I did it as flowers that way you could use the floral and take one of your leaf dies and you could add your leaf die to it and have a beautiful floral background. Or you can just use your florals. Or you can put the solid leaves behind and do something with that. There's options in all of these. I'm gonna start with the floral die. So I'm gonna start with the floral die. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out of opulent paper. How about we use this pretty, I mean, I want to use the mirror. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use the mirror. So I'm going to cut my floral. And remember, this is coated paper, so my little bits and pieces are not going to fall out as easy as I might like them. Oh, maybe I should change paper because of that. Well, let's cut it and let's see how, how much I'm going to have to pull out. And if it's too much, then I'll cut it again in a more cardstock, one of the colors that are that's more of a cardstock and doesn't have the white background so that it falls out easier. Okay, so I've got my base platform. I've got my solo shim, my base platform, my solo shim, 
my multi no, my precision face plate, my paper, my die, and I'm going to tweak it and send it on through. Get everything lined up so everything rolls through easy peasy. If it doesn't want to roll through, you've got your sandwich wrong. Look at how easy that was. Lovely. Now I'm going to take it and I can get rid of that back piece. This is just going to come right off. And lay it down and send it through. And where it didn't cut the first time, it'll cut the second. Well, it's not horrible getting the pieces out. I've almost got them done. That wasn't too bad, was it? You've watched me struggle <laughs> with other things much longer. <laughs> There's still quite a few in there. Slowly but surely. Sometimes turning it around on the back side makes it easier for you to see <laughs> what's still left in there. Okay, so I think I'm okay. Still see those in there, but I think we're going to go ahead and go with it. Because there's still more little bits and pieces. But I could probably sit here for 20 minutes and still find little bits and pieces. So, pretty though, right? So now I'm going to take a piece of white paper. Oh, let's just use that one, shall we? I will take a piece of Stacy tape. Put it down. Get it down real good. My heart wants to take all these little bits and pieces out. But my brain says, no, no. Okay, listen. Peel up my liner to expose my sticky. Save my liner. Put my die cut straight down on the sticky. I can't not have those in. They have to come out. So I'm taking them out because I know the minute I lay it down I'm done for. Alright and then take my liner put it right back over the top and just press it in. Just press it in. Peel my liner off and save it to use later. Now I can use my white. I use my white and over the top. So last time I used my glitter, the, the iridescence. This is the diamond color. This is just a glitter without glitter. So it's just going to give me a canvas to work on. And I'm going to let it walk itself on down. And anywhere where I didn't get any glitter, I'm just going to scooch it on over. And I can take my makeup brush and kind of move it where it needs to go. All I'm doing is giving myself a canvas to work from. Okay, I'm going to end up putting all of that back in. Put 
my lid on. Burnish. And why did we put the die cut down first? It's building a barrier so that the liquid, the ink, because all inks are liquid, doesn't seep through. Oh, I pulled up that one. Rub too hard. All right, let's see. What colors do we want to go with? Um, I'm going to go with yellow because, well, it's me. And maybe, maybe a pink and a yellow. And a blender pen. So, dot, dot, do not color. Your nibs are important. The Even though it feels as fine as, you know, polished velvet or velvet, it feels so satiny, it still can play havoc on your nibs if you do this. You're just going to dot your color in and your nibs will be happy. Where you're going to use the blender pin is to pull color out. So I'm just putting all my pink all around and that specialty paper, that opulent paper is resisting the ink. So I'm not coloring the paper by accident. If it was white paper, it would be pink everywhere on all the outlines of the flower. But I'm using a specialty paper that resists the color. Okay, so I've got some pink. Let's see if I can zoom in a little closer. And is that close enough, you guys? And then some yellow. And I'm going to dot it in. And I'm going to go into one color and then out. And I've got my little hand holds. Dotting it in. Not coloring. And adding my color. And those colors because they're sitting on top of that glitter which has kind of made it a non-porous type surface it's letting the colors blend into each other and melt into each other would not happen like that on paper but I use that glitter without glitter so you don't have that iridescence coming through it Maybe you like the iridescence, then you get the diamond glitter. Maybe you don't like the iridescence, then you just get the white glitter, the glitter without glitter. That gives you the opportunity to have the canvas to do this on. I can go back and I can add more pink if I want. I can go in now with my blender, get that green out, and I can now, oh, I missed a petal. I always seem to miss one. I 
can now take my colorless blender and pull color out to give some highlight. Pull some color out to give a little bit of highlight. Lift that color. It's not blending the color, it's lifting the color to give, to give some highlight. So now you've got a dark, a mid, and a light tone. It's so simple, and it requires no skill, really no skill. I'm just going in there and blotting and picking up color. And if I pick up too much, what do I do? I add some more back in. I pick up too much color, I go back in, and I take the yellow and I add some more back in. This is doable by any level of crafter. You know all those peel-off stickers you have that are pretty shapes and go get some of your Stacy tape? Put those peel off stickers down just like I did with the die cut. Press it into the Stacy tape, add your glitter, and start coloring. You don't have to use a die cut. Maybe you don't have a die cut machine. You can get stickers. We sell them from by Gigi. J E J E. They're like a dollar fifty, and you get several stickers on a sheet, and you can do the exact same thing to start with. Absolutely. It's so pretty. And you can go in and you can pull, do I want to just do, one color. One color. It doesn't take a lot of time. You can do this in front of the TV, you can do this on a trip, you can do this on an airplane. Doesn't take a lot of skill. And then I can just dot it in, dot, 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 dot. And I can either leave it one color or I can go back and pull up. Make sure it runs clear. And dot, 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 dot. And then wipe off. And then dot, 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 dot and then wipe off. Why am I wiping off in between? Because I don't want to take the color to the next one. I want to I want to lighten color, not not add color. Dot 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 dot. And wipe off. Dot 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 dot. And wipe off if I want it really light at the top, then I go in and I try to lift almost all of that color off. Almost all that color off. I'm really trying to get quite a bit of that color out so that I have a really nice mid-tone shadow and highlight. Oh, just went into the other one, but okay. It is what it is. I should have been a little more careful, but that's okay. Mid-tone highlights and soften it up. I could go back in and add more color. 
I could go back in if I didn't like that. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm not crazy about that. I liked it better with the yellow. Okay. Yellow. You don't like the yellow? Okay, pull it up. <laughs> you have options. Easy and beautiful. But this set, this set has, ooh, don't lose that. Let's try and be efficient and put these away. Blender pin. You need more of these than any other. Even if you're using Bic or Sharpies, you need the blender pin. The blender pin is what makes it happen. You'll need them more so if you're using Bix and Sharpies because the Bix and Sharpies don't have a brush tip. So that blender pin lets you pull that color. And, and what, do I, when I, what do I mean by pull that color? Mm. Oh, I've got yellow here. The blender pin will let you add color down here Add color at the bottom. Let's get the pink on. And then the blender pen will let you pull it up. And because Bix and Sharpies don't have, look at how beautiful is that? Oh my gosh! Just a little, a little dabble, do ya? all the way around. And then just gently, gently pull the color up. Can't do it without the blender pin. Gotta have the blender pin. And I'm making just the sweetest, softest little flower. So easy and so pretty. And if I want to add more yellow back in towards the bottom, you just put your pin down and add more color. You're the artist. And this is your art. Okay, but this set has, this set has these two dies. I didn't do this die the same and then just flip it. They're two distinctly different dies that can work independently of each other or together. So let's cut this, let's cut each one of them out of the tape liner. I'm trying to get the sticky off. Okay, so I've got one piece of liner. That's a little close. Two pieces of liner. All right, so let's cut it. Bring my machine over. Oh, it's still got that sticky on the top. And liner down, doesn't matter which side. The liner's the same both ways. You don't have to go, is one side better than the other? No, both of them work fine. Just cut. Send it on through. My guess is that it cut on the first pass because the liner is very fine. Let's get all the bits and pieces out of this. And 
and you can use it again and again and again until you can't. At some point, it's going to break. At some point, it's going to tear or a leaf is going to fall off. It's going to happen. It's, it's the stuff you normally throw away. <laughs> Remember that. This is the stuff you normally throw away. So when it happens, you can't get mad. Just cut another piece. And if you have smaller dies and you have two and a half inch tape or two inch tape and it works, the dies fit that tape, then use that liner size. You don't have to use a big one. Okay, so I cut this one. And now I'm gonna cut this one, which is different. So let's put that there. Let's cut this one. Bring my machine back on over. Line it on up. Send it on through. And if it makes your heart happy, just roll it on back. It really, with the liner, makes no difference. Can you use other liner? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know that liner from Elizabeth Crafts will work on mine. I, I don't know that. I know my liner is thicker, I think, than most. It makes it easier to peel it off. But I suppose all you can do is try, if you just try a little square of it and see what works, I don't know. Never hurts to try. All you find out is that yay, it works or nope. Okay, then let's bring over a piece of white paper. And let's use a piece of tape. So this is a six inch roll. got some really nice handholds here. Handholds are good to have. Trim it out just because I've got a little bit of this tape sticking off the sides. I'm just going to trim it down so it doesn't stick to me. Okay. Now let's expose our sticky. and save the liner. Now I've got two masks here. Not one, but two. I don't have everything out of these. But you know what? You go with what you got. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my first one down. first one down, grab the liner, and press it into place. Maybe I'm too close. Press it into place. If you needed to pull it up, can you? Yes, because it's not paper. All right, now I'm going to take the other liner, and I'm going to line it on up, and I'm going to press it into place. So I'm just going to match my corners to the best of my ability. See, you've got the liner, so you're able to peel it up and start again. Line up my corners, come on.
there we go. Now, the second mask that I just put down, the entire mask is not going to stick because I've got it laying on top of the first one. That's okay. If I don't put them down at the exact same time, I can't do one color and then the other color, one mask and then the other mask. So I'm just going to press them down really good. And you'll see this side is not down because it's laying on top of the other mask. But my design is down because one comes this way and one goes that way. The only thing that overlaps is part of the frame. So I've got it down really good, right? Looks pretty good to you, right? So this time, let's go ahead and use the glitter, the diamond glitter. I think I'm going to trim this down. that side so I don't have so much to see so you can see the mask is pulling but that's okay it's just the frame the center section is stuck down good and that's what we need to stay in place one more cut there all right if there's any concern Take a piece of liner and just press down just to make sure. And then let's take our, oh, see, let's take our diamond. But I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry because I know that there's a mask underneath it. I'm going to take my diamond glitter. I'm going to put some across the top. I'm going to kind of let it walk on down so that any place that has exposed sticky is going to get glitter. I can move it a little bit if I need to. And then I can put it all back away. You use so little of this glitter because it's ground so fine. So it takes more to fill the jar, which is why the price usually is more money for a micro fine glitter. Again, ours is $3.99. I want to say comparable is around $6.50. Then my finger. And give it a burnish. Now there might be some glitter that's underneath the, the edges because they were not completely down. See, not completely down. I'm, oh, don't do that. I'm okay with that. All right, and then give a dust off. See, none on my hands. Now I can take my masks off. One. And two. And my design is there. Now I take my glitter. Ooh, what do I like? So let's do some green. And this time I'm just gonna kinda go everywhere. So I am agreeing, I am knowingly acknowledging that I cannot put this glitter back in my green jar because I am going to mix it with a few colors. Hmm, and then maybe some copper. Less is more. I got a little mound over here, I'm, so I'm going to use less because I'm going to move that around. And then maybe some... Ma mahogany? Okay. 
So this is an ultra fine. It's a little bit chunkier than a micro fine glitter, which is the finest of glitters. And my glitters actually ground finer than a micro fine. I wanted it dust like. <laughs> They're like, really? And I'm like, grind it more, baby. Okay. And then I think I'll add just a little bit more of my green. Oop, too much. All right. Looks like a hot mess there. Until I start moving it around. And anywhere there's exposed sticky, I want glitter to fill that space in. And if I need more, then I put more on. I can feel that it's still kind of sticky there and it's still kind of sticky there. So before I go grab more, I'm gonna gather up all the extra and I'm gonna move it everywhere I think, see? I'm gonna move it to where I see it needs glitter. And I'm gonna use up all that extra. And if I still need more, then I'm gonna get more. See, I still need more. Look at this side, doesn't have hardly anything. What color should we make it? Uh, a little green, maybe a little gold. Maybe a little copper, just to fill in the space where there isn't. And it's almost like dust. I mean, I'm using so little, but it'll fill all that space in. Same, just get it all over, gather it all up, and move it where it needs to be. There's very little glitter left for me to put into a mishmash pot. That's what I have left down at the bottom. That's all that's left. So I'm not gonna bother with a mishmash pot. This is fun for everybody. It's an aha moment, a wow, a holy smokes artichokes for anybody who does this. It's so pretty, but maybe you'd prefer But maybe you'd prefer <laughs> uh, let's see this one goes that way. Maybe you'd prefer this. Maybe you'd prefer to snip out 
snip out the top one just leaving your frame and now you have the border just for the bottom or vice versa all you gotta do is take some scissors and snip it out hey have we heard sirens i don't know that we have all right so you get you get the gist what do you like better you choose you have options all right <laughs> for those of you who are still with me thank you i appreciate it very much your support and understanding of my long classes is greatly appreciated <laughs> for those of you who left early well that's a shame because it really was it really is amazing stuff i mean it's just it's all absolutely beautiful and I, I i know it's mine and i probably shouldn't say that but i am saying it because i love it i just i just love it i love my kaleidoscope dies i love the designing I love the pricing. I love everything that can be done with them. It's just a little bit of happiness and it's creativity for everybody. And you're not stuck doing the same thing again and again and again. You can change it up absolutely depending on what look you're trying to achieve or how much time you want to put into it. How much BAM do you want? That's good BAM, man. <laughs> Okay, so what what is on sale this week? We took we took this and we started very simple and we went more and more and more until we had wow. And I hope you see how you can do this too with not a lot of skill. Truly, I promise you, it's it's achievable by everybody you don't have to be strong in coloring i wasn't i barely colored i dotted color i dotted my color you don't have to, you just pick the colors that you like they don't even have to go together this is pink and orange pink and yellow i dotted my color you don't have to be strong in 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 glittering or laying down your glitter i drizzled it everywhere and made beautiful things. Or you can just stick with paper. Okay, so what's on sale? I think we have about 16 colors of the of the Stampendous. If you already placed an order for Stampendous Glitter, we um, that YouTube is coming up soon to ship. We're having to ship YouTubes out of order. It's possible you're gonna get a newer YouTube before an older YouTube, logistical nightmares, port nightmares, trucking nightmare. It is what it is. But there are some colors that are no longer available that we completely sold out of. So I want to say there's about 16 colors of the Stampendous glitter. It is great glitter. It is fair priced. It is, it is a rock star. So you're good to go. Then we have my two glitters and I did a bundle. So if you bought, they're $3.99 each. So you have the diamond, which has the multicolored in it. You have the glitter that's not glitter, so it's a white glitter. They're $3.99 each. If you do the bundle, we did it for $5.99 on my glitter. I have the opulent, beautiful charcoal paper. If you don't own any opulent paper, oh my gosh, find somebody who owns it and have them tell you how amazing it is. Charcoal works well with this because really to do the the markers you have to use a black paper a gold won't work you're going to be able to see the marker um a white won't work you're going to be able to see the marker you need a dark colored paper and with these being specialty papers the ink resists from it so you can get away from just doing black and you can do some of those beautiful grays that are in here that just lend it softens it up it just they're so pretty so opulent is on sale we've got the 
Boyazi Andrews alcohol markers will keep on sale for you. They're $1.99. I can't do any better than $1.99. And please know they're coming from Australia. Please know that. <laughs> we had a customer who was not very happy with us. Her markers haven't shipped yet. They're in line to ship. I wish I could get them to her sooner. But there's, you know, it takes time. It just does. And they're $1.99. Be patient. It's worth the wait for your $1.99. Trust me. Believe me. And buy extra zeros, please. You're going to need them. He's not doing refills yet. If we're talking about doing refills for the zeros, but I don't have them yet. We're also, I just got in samples of the new nibs, replaceable nibs, so that you can swap out nibs if you have one that needs to be changed. We're working on that. I've just got the samples of those. So I'm working on those with Ozzy Andrew now. I'm also working on a checkbook so you can mark your colors. We're working on all of that. So that's all on sale for you. Then, of course, we have, well, we have the Simply Botanical for November. Oh, so cute. Diane stamp set. And then we have the kaleidoscope dies. So there is three different kaleidoscope dies. Each one of them comes with four dies. They're $29.99. That doesn't buy you just one or two. That buys you all four in the set. And if the set had extra space, I add, look at all the sentiments you get with this one. If the set had space, I added. And you get the top pieces so that you can layer on top. Oh, I had this one twice. Oh, because it goes with that. Okay. And my leaves, which I think look absolutely stunning. I think they look stunning like that. What a perfect background for something. Put some flowers on it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so storyboards. Let's all give Elena a big thank you. Oh, heavy. Let's give Elena a big thank you for the storyboards. So here is the background. So the four individual dies all by themselves. And then you have them in various combinations. So you can see them in various combinations of layering. This isn't all you can do with them. <laughs> it's some of what you can do with them in different combinations. Right? Right. Then we have the peacock feather. And again, so you've got the individual dies. Here's all of your individual dies. This layers inside here. This one layers inside here so you can pop it if you want. You've got all the words, all the sentiments. So there's your individual dies. And then here are your layers. So you can layer like this or like that or like that or like that, or like that. You choose what you want to do. And then last but not least, so you've got the dies. You can use, you can use these just on their own. You can trim them out. You can cr crop them down. You can get rid of the swirls if you want. You've got the floral, you've got the background so that it adds the shadow to it. You've got little extra pieces and you've got sentiments. So there are all of your individual dies. And then here, here are some of your layering opportunities. Yay! And then she put things together. So you've got different backgrounds. Like this is one of the backgrounds from the um, from the um, solid background, the the decoy background, mixed in with your peacock feathers. 
or with your leaves. Elena just put different, different things together to give you an idea of what else can be done if you have more than one set. She just wanted to give you an idea, again, that you're not limited. All right, are we ready for samples? Let's start with Miss Belinda. Miss Belinda. I told you something blue. Beautiful, right? And then you open it and you've got love inside. So Belinda. And then she did the hello. So that's the die we were using today. The hello is Ozzy Andrews word die, but the background die is mine. And she cut it twice and slightly off-centered it so you had a shadow to it. This is Belinda. And look at this one. Is this gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Way to go, Belinda. And I love that you did them all in black cards. I love it. Belinda. Belinda. Oh, she took a background from previous <laughs> and mixed it in. <laughs> and last but not least for Belinda. Then we have Elena. And Elena took two of them and put them side by side to get the slim line. She embossed this. This is with the, the bottom die I told you that you can run through and emboss it and that's exactly what she did. Look at how beautiful is this on an acetate. She made an acetate card. Look at how soft and subtle that is. See an acetate card. That's beautiful. And here she used it as a stencil, my flower die, and she stenciled with it to make a slim line. Didn't die cut at all. She stenciled. And then look at this. Isn't that so pretty? You can do this. And then here, look at this one. And then we have Doris. Doris has lots of little tabs for me. Thank you. That way I know to open them. This is Doris's peacock feather. And then you open, oh, so cute. And another peacock feather from Doris. So this is using the extra pieces that I was able to fit in into a slim line. Then you open it. And here she's used the background leaves. Look at that. How perfect is that? And then let's see what we get when we open it. Oh, so cute. And here we have the background eyes with the peacock feather on top of it. And we open it. <laughs> I didn't know what it said. I <laughs> don't look ahead of time. <laughs> and then look at this one. Oh, this is just happiness. Look at the detail.
Look at the detail. And then you open it. Oh, very nice. And then tis the season. This one doesn't have a tab, so I'm not opening it. I mean, what a difference. Same die. Totally different look. And here she made a floral the inks and she used flakes and so pretty. So this is Doris. And then last we have Claire. Yes, Claire, this is beautiful. I mean, it's really beautiful. You, oh, you guys, you rocked it. You really rocked it. I love Belinda's. I love how she used the black cards on all of them. Look at the ombre. This is Claire. Look at how pretty this is. And this isn't even using all the, 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 the layers. This is just using two of the layers. And the flowers. And she took the little extra pieces. And look at she cut them and she made little leaves coming off the side of them. You got bling in the center. This is Claire. And then look at this one. Here she did the leaves out of white. They're all so good. Gosh, you just have to feel inspired when you see their samples. You just have to. Look at she just she just threw everything in the kitchen sink. The leaves are actually behind behind the floral. That's Ozzy Andrews congrats on there. But look at the detail. The colors are beautiful, Claire. Look at the detail. And then she also used the floral as a stencil. And then last but not least, Elena made a layout. So she used the floral for stenciling. She's got a pocket here. She used the little leaf to pull the little tag out. You've got them here and there. Elena made a layout. So pretty, so vintage. This was darling. Look at, you've got the floral die as the front of the pocket, and then you've got the leaf to pull it out, to pull the tag. Super cute, Elena, really darling. All right, you guys. Well, it's a class. <laughs> It's not as long as my Be a Glitter Goddess class if you were to come to the store. That's for sure. <laughs> and I wish it could be hands-on. I wish you could be here playing with all the glitter. And like I said, once we, once we fully reopen, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a couple classes and get back in the swing of things. And we can't wait to start doing our free in-store make and takes. And like I said, our make and takes are usually an hour long. And I know that there are some crafty classes that are an hour long and they're totally free. So we're hoping for, we're hoping 2022 allows us to, to, to do all of those things again and have in-store events. And anyway, we're going to get there one day at a time. So where are you going to find all of this great stuff? Well, glitter you may already own. Absolutely. And if you don't shop local for it, go to your local craft store and buy your glitter. Stampendous is great glitter and sure we'd love you to shop with us, but really, if you've got a local store, cherish them. If you've got a local place to go, go. We're, I'm perfectly happy with you shopping local as long as it's a small independent mom and pop. Yay. 
<laughs> the the Aussie Andrew alcohol link markers, I think that we may be the only one in the States that carry them. I know there's very few people, but they're $1.99. We've got a huge order coming on in, and, um, and I know many of you already have your alcohol markers. So yay, enjoy them. Pick up extra blenders. That's if I can't if I can't stress it enough, pick up extra blenders. If your order is $49, add one of these to get free shipping. Hello. <laughs> you want extra blenders. You do. We have my glitter. So my microfine glitter is available. You can only get it here. Um, the dyes you can only get here because they're exclusive to us. The tape, if you've got tape already, give it a whirl. All double-sided tape is not the same, not by a long shot. We can give a thumbs up to Suk Wang tape, which would be Scorpal, Elizabeth Crafts, or mine. Other than that, I make no promises. <laughs> What Sizzix Opulent Paper, the charcoal, if you can find it at your local store, buy it. And if not, then we appreciate you shopping with us. But if you've got a local store that carries Sizzix products, ask them to bring Opulent Paper in. They will not be disappointed. Promise you. You tell them Stacy at Scrapbooking Made Simple said, it's a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Share it with your friends and your family and your loved ones because we are not promised tomorrow. So put aside all the doorbuster deals and, and stores opening at 4 p.m. and whatever they're doing. Put that aside and take a moment to say, Hey, how's your day? How was your week? Tell me something, tell me something that made your heart happy. Talk to each other. It's amazing. It's amazing what we do when we put down our phones and our devices and step away from all that's around us because it just goes, it comes at you so fast. Your family will never be disappointed in the attention you give them. Not ever. All right. It's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you all next Friday at 8 a.m. sunny California time for our Black Friday sale that starts after Thanksgiving. So I'll see you then. Bye, everybody.